Hello and welcome to episode 91 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in Northwest London. You can find me on Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki. I have been taking a really long break. I haven't been on there since November last year. Um, I will probably go back at some point, but if you want to have a scroll back and see some of my old projects, that is probably your best place to look. So for nostalgia's sake, I will be linking to that and everything else I mentioned in this episode just down below. Now there will be some Ravelry links, but for people who don't want to use Ravelry or don't have an account, I will be putting in non-Ravelry links where possible. As always, let's kick the podcast off with a massive thank you and welcome to any new viewers. I really appreciate you giving the podcast a shot. I am pretty sometime-ish at the moment, so I appreciate it even more. Thank you so very much for spending some time here with me. If you are a returning viewer though, extra special big thank you to you because I have been away for quite some time and I just really appreciate you going oh my gosh and clicking play on this one so hi I'm back <laughs> thank you so much for being so patient with me I really do appreciate it now as I said it has been a very very long break but boy was it needed uh, before I go into that I am just gonna say it is October here in London it is gone six o'clock now I it's a grim grim grey day out as per um, I've got my curtains drawn my light on my big lights on I didn't set up my microphone uh, because I'm just trying to make things as easy for myself as possible. Um, I don't have my glasses on. It looks okay. Hopefully this isn't too bright, but I am just getting back in the swing of things. So I will thank you now for your patience if things do look a little wonkier than usual. But yes, as I said, it has been a long break. It was needed. Um, burnout is a very, very real thing and you think all you need is a couple of weeks rest and then you realize that adulthood is not really conducive to the kind of rest that you need um, so there we go i'm not going to go into a mad amount of detail about it i know a lot of people have been really struggling with the pandemic and with burnout pandemic induced burnout and anxiety and all of that so i'm not going to go into too much detail but safe to say that is where I was. <laughs> um, I am feeling a lot better. I am pretty tired because my job kicks my butt. <laughs> and um, I work a lot all day. I don't really stop. I'm just constantly like, <laughs> which is great, um, but also tiring. However, <laughs> my reading and knitting and crochet mojo has been coming back a lot over the past couple of weeks. So that is a really good sign. It means I'm coming out of the woods. So here I am. I didn't want to jump straight on to the podcast as soon as I started knitting again. I wanted to give it a couple of weeks so that I had something to talk about. Um, so yeah, here we are. That, that's it, that's where I've been, that's what I've been doing. Um, I've had a few lovely messages while I've been away and I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much, that's so kind. I'm pretty out of practice, as you can no doubt tell by the lighting and you know, it's probably all in soft focus because that's what the world looks like when you don't have your glasses on. Um, but I didn't make a cup of tea, so I am on the absolute dregs <laughs> of my tea. Um, but it's in my little Wally cup and it is my standard Earl Grey. However, the lovely people at Bird and Blend sent me a little care package, which I massively, massively uh, appreciated. There was a lovely big um, uh, bag of Earl Grey creme, which is usually a little bit too sweet for me. However, um, having it with black with a squeeze of lemon is actually quite tasty and my mum and nan really like that one so that is good and they also included these um, Dozy Girl, I've literally been hanging on to this guys so that I could show you I've literally been hanging on to this but I've had this before it's um, a blend of chamomile, lavender and rose and it is delicious and I don't normally like rose but it's a very subtle rose so if you're a bit like me and you're worried it's going to taste like soap it's, it's good does the job I really enjoy that and they also included smoky Russian which is a Russian caravan tea an ancient and full-bodied blend featuring pinewood smoked lapsang souchong now anybody who has seen 
a number of these podcasts will know I'm not usually a fan of smoky black teas. However, I have had smoky Russian before and it's really, really nice. I think it just doesn't have that um, bonfire blast in your face. It's a lot more subtle and I really enjoy this. And I do usually have it with milk. Um, just a just a tag. I'm really not somebody who enjoys milky teas, so it's the tiniest little droplet. Um, so yeah, I heartily recommend. And now that I've shown these to you, I can have them. I can enjoy them. So I'll probably have this for um, bedtime and this for breakfast. That will give me a good kickstart in the morning. Now before we get into whipped up, one thing I always forget to mention, so I've had to stick it into my show notes as a reminder, um, is that I have a Kofi account. If you would like to buy me a cup of coffee, I would absolutely love that, thank you so much. I will probably use it on an actual cup of coffee on my way into work um, the couple of mornings that I go in. But that's it. Um, I'm kind of aware that potentially it sounded bad at the beginning when I was like, oh, I've got burnout. I'm fine, as you can see. I'm, as I said, I'm not 100%, um, but I'm, I'm getting there and I'm feeling a hell of a lot better than I did. I'm still pretty tired and I have that kind of internal, just could nap all day. But here we are, we're feeling good and I'm glad to be back. So let's move on to Whipped Up. After a pretty long hiatus, when you would imagine that I would be sat here and whipped up, pulling foes and whips out of a magical hat like a magician, no, that isn't what you're getting today. What you're getting is authenticity and honesty and not a lot else. <laughs> not a lot else. But I do have a couple of foes for you and you will be shocked that they're socks said no one ever. You know, every time I say that though, I do think there was a time, you know, when I started this podcast when I did not knit socks. I could not knit socks. Um, I documented on this podcast my many and varied attempts to knit socks and how they failed. But here I am loving the sock life. The sock life has chosen me. And these are a, another pair. This is pair number seven for my Christmas box of socks. So this is uh, Twisted Limone in Peppermint Bark, this stripy bit. And the cuffs, heels and toes, wow did I have to think about that. Cuffs, heels and toes is Lamington Lass in Go Berry Go. Um, because you know I love a contrast. And there's something very festive about contrasty socks, I think. So there you go. As always, these are knit with my vanilla sock recipe from the lovely ladies at Meanwhile at the Castle, who did a fantastic video tutorial on how to knit socks, um, which I always link to because it is amazing and is the thing that made me able to knit socks. So I'm always very grateful to them. But otherwise, what else to say about these? Well, these were ages in the making. So sock number one, which I don't know was this one, but we're gonna pretend for the sake of narrative. Um, it just took forever. It was just such a slog to get through. No fault to the yarn, all, all me. Just, uh, that was me kind of grinding to a slow halt um, with life, <laughs> basically. And then once my mojo came back, Number two kind of flew off the needles. So there you go, that's kind of how I knew, oh, I'm doing better, so that's good. Do, the one thing I will say about these is I'm not, I'm not entirely sure on this stripe pattern. So I love the peppermint greens here, which is like a, sh a light shade and a dark shade, and then the pink. I even like the red, I love the speckled. I just don't really understand what these browns are doing here, really. I don't hate them. I think it's really, really kitschy and cute. They, it reminds me um, of my West Yorkshire Spinners Vintage Fairy Lights pair. Um, it's got that very... <sighs> when did that... There was like a stop motion... Rain... Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer that came out. And I feel like it was the 80s or the 90s. I watched it every year. It gives me that vibe, you know? Um but not being somebody who understands colour in any way, I don't get it, but I love it. Um, and it's just got that, like I say, very kitschy Christmassy vibe, which I love. 
and I do have another faux. This is another vanilla sock. It is also from my vanilla sock recipe, which I worked out based on the videos by the lovely ladies at Meanwhile at the Castle. And this is knit out of Stranded Dye Works 2020 Christmas colorway, Zooming Home for Christmas. Um, so named because we all spent a lot of time on Zoom last year. This year hasn't been that much different, although it's been Google Hangouts more so for me recently. So, you know, we like to ring the changes. And um, I believe there was um, uh, uh, an option on the contrast colorways. So you could have green or you could have red. And I went with green um, for no other reason than that. I feel like I've got a lot of red contrast heels, toes and cuffs in my Christmas box. I don't know that for certain. It's just a feeling that I have. And I quite liked how it made them a little bit more piney, which I like. Piney, pine trees, not like p longing. Pine trees, Christmas trees. Wow, I'm out of practice. You can tell. The tangents, they are wild. Not a stripy sock, very much all speckly and delicious and very sort of dark and moody, which I really enjoy. This, um, does have some pooling, so we've got like a, a plum a plum pool there and a little green pool here um, just because of the gusset and that really doesn't bother me at all. I know a lot of people um, are concerned about pooling, so here I've got it in green and not really any on that side. Um, I know a lot of people don't really like pooling and it genuinely doesn't bother me, but I just thought I'd point it out. Um, these flew off the needles in comparison to the last pair, which is not difficult when you consider how slow I was with the last pair. Um, one of these in particular, again, goodness knows which one, one of these in particular I turned round in the space of three or four days um, because, as I think I've mentioned before, um, I put all of my leftovers into a bag for my advent swap and then what is left over from that goes to a friend of mine who is also working on a scrappy crochet blanket. We were going to the cake and bake sale on a Saturday and I decided that I had to finish the body of the sock um, before the Saturday so that I could give her the um, yarn. I went completely blank then, yarn. <laughs> um, because I, I don't know, I just, in my head, I was like, I don't wanna keep it in my house, hanging around waiting to give to her, I might lose it. I don't know, it just, a mad spirit descended and I had to finish it. So yeah, I did like the leg in one night, the heel and gusset in another, the foot in another, and then I left the toe to the Saturday evening when I got home. So yeah, I whizzed through this and I guess, yeah, the mojo really is a gojo. I will say I haven't blocked these, um, I've just popped them on the, the blockers for uh, demonstration purposes, um, but I don't know, do you even need to block socks, really? I don't think you do, like they're going on my feet. I kind of like blocking them though, because like when, then when you take them off and they just lay like a perfect sock shape, it's very satisfying. And now we have a whip. And this is my one and only whip because I am very wary at this point of um, starting multiple whips um, because mojo is a, it's a delicate and tricksy thing and I don't want to tempt fate too much. So this is my Dreamcatcher Crochet Cardigan by Sarah Ruan and it's knit in paint box chunky? Yes, <laughs> it is knit in paint box yarns, chunky in the oatmeal colorway, which is basically the yarn the pattern calls for. And I love that it's a neutral, but it's probably not going to show up fantastically well because I'm wearing white. Oh, I didn't really think that through, did I? Mm. So as you can see in the middle there, it has this sort of dream catcher kind of motif and that will sit in the middle of the back. And I think I'm near to finishing it. It's one of those things, I did read the pattern and I looked at the schematic and it made complete sense. However, the moment I looked away from said schematic, it stopped making sense. So at the moment, I don't know, it sort of, it was a square and now I'm kind of making it into a diamond. I don't know, I don't know what's happening. I, I'm fairly certain when I finish this side, I then move on to doing the arms and then it's just the collar to do, I think. 
So I'm fairly close to finishing this and this again is why I've kind of stuck to not having any other whips because then I will finish this sooner. Um, and I, I'm kind of antsy to start something else which I'll talk about shortly so I'm, I'm keen to finish it. I have zero idea if this is going to fit. I kind of wanted it slouchy and oversized. I'm aware my crocheting is quite tight so perhaps I should have gone for a large instead of the medium. But you know what, even if it doesn't fit it will be cosy around the house. It will probably look nicer on my Google Hangout calls for work than me sat in my dressing gown, which is the truth. I take it off so you can't see and I kind of like put it around my, my waist and then you can only see from there. But this I could actually leave on and have like cozily around me, which would be nice. And it has the added uh, bonus of being able to say, oh this, no, no, I made this, which is always really good. So that's that. With a bit of luck, I will have a chunk of that done over the weekend. Um, I don't have a lot of plans. We are now in Strictly season, which means that's what I do of a Saturday night. I watch Strictly Come Dancing and I don't, I'm not even mad about it. I love it. So, however, I did kind of touch on the fact that I am keen to start a new project. Um, so I thought I would tell you about that. Um, browsing on Twitter, an author that I follow whose name has gone completely out of my head, um, an, but an author that I follow, um, posted a picture of herself in this gorgeous crochet cardigan. She'd done it in uh, a black background colour with bright colours and I thought it was gorgeous and she was kind enough to let me know what the pattern was. And hilariously, um, I tweeted her, didn't know if or when she would get back to me, so immediately went over to Ravelry and did a, a search with all the filters and I stumbled across the exact pattern just about as she tweeted me back and let me know that it was the Gigi cardigan by Holly Woodward. It is gorgeous. I will link it down below. It will be a Ravelry link, but I will have a look to see if I can find it anywhere else. Um, but the pictures on Ravelry, um, the, the kind of main pattern pictures, there's one version of it with a gray background and one version of it with an oatmeal background. I'm apparently feeling the oatmeal guys because that is what I want and I love that it's got kind of these like balloony sleeves that kind of nip in at the wrist um I like that it's a little bit shorter so I think that's quite flattering I love the the colors but the way pairing it with a neutral kind of makes it neutral almost um and I'm just thinking with my jeans a white t-shirt maybe this one although this is a crop top um and some little booties. I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock it. I'm gonna absolutely love that thing. So that is my next thing that I want to make. Um, not counting socks, of course. That is my next kind of big project. And I did want to crochet a garment this year. So if I crochet two, double win. Now I don't usually have any stash enhancement, and I don't think anyone will be shocked to hear that there is no stash enhancement really, um, because when your mojo goes. I know some people um, do tend to buy yarn when they don't have the mojo to knit. I don't. I just didn't look at patterns. I didn't look at yarns. I didn't look into Ravelry. It was just whoosh, shut down. But I did get one thing. Because when I kind of started thinking about knitting again, I realised oh, we're getting to that time of year where West Yorkshire Spinners releases their Christmas colourway. So obviously, yes, that was one of the first things that I did. I ran and got that. And I don't have it here. I think it might be, I think it might be in here. Bear with. There we go. That is this year's the 2021 West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas colourway and it is called Vintage Tinsel and it's got, I hope it's picking up, a little sparkle, a little sparkle. And it is a, it is a stripe pattern and it's in these really dark jewel tones and you know I love my jewel tones, I love them. So this is absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't necessarily scream Christmas to me, I will admit. Um, but it is a Christmas colourway and therefore it will go in my Christmas box of socks. Now, as always, West Yorkshire Spinners included a pattern with this. 
this is the pattern. I really like how they've styled it. Um, somebody just sat down, looks like they're in the middle of their Christmas decorating. I really, really love this. However, oh, and also obviously you can see, try and make it so it doesn't catch the light. You can see how it knits up, which is beautifully. Um, however, can you see the pattern in this? No, you cannot. Um, but if you open it up, There are a few more pictures in the pattern, which I'm struggling to show because the light, the light. Um, but it is, you can particularly see here, quite an intricate pattern. It looks sort of cable-y. I think it is. Might be, is it? I don't know. I... Not the foggiest, hang on. No, it doesn't look like it's a cable pattern, but it does look like quite a, a dainty and intricate pattern and I just feel a little bit disappointed that they're doing it on this really dark stripy yarn so you're not going to see it. Um, I'm thinking that I quite like the look of this pattern, I think, from what I can see of it. Um, so I'm kind of wondering if maybe I get myself some pine green yarn with a red contrast and do just a plain coloured but patterned sock for Christmas and then maybe get a different pattern and do a red sock with a green contrast. Um, I think that would be quite fun. I've been wanting to try more patterned socks since doing my Elton Inn socks earlier this year. So this would be a really good opportunity to bolster my Christmas box and also try some patterns. Just not gonna do it in this, if I'm completely honest. And also, I'm not entirely sure what colour to use as a contrast, so I think I'm going to cut myself some slack <laughs> and I'm going to just knit a pair of socks, basically. I'm just going to knit one pair of socks and not do the contrast, which is very unlike me, very unlike me. Ever since I discovered the joy that a contrast uh, heel toe cuff gives me, but I just, I cannot justify <laughs> buying a whole ball of yarn just to, well, I suppose I could get a mini. No, I'm gonna have a pair in my box that doesn't have a contrast and it's okay. Yes, um, I will be finishing my crochet cardigan. I will be treating myself to the yarn for a new one and this will be my go-to take away with me knitting. Um, I do have to go into the office once or twice a week so it might be my on the go knitting although I feel a bit weird about having my stuff out on the tube still just a bit. Ugh. So yeah that's everything for whipped up this week. There we go everything is on the floor it is all a mess as per usual when I podcast. Oh boy. Now I'm gonna try and keep this brief uh, because dinner time is approaching and also I want to uh, keep my editing time really low as well as my captioning time. However, I am going to do a very quick knit and natter. So I'll see you over there. Whew. So knit and natter, as I said, is going to be a really quick one because your girl hates to edit. I'm not gonna lie, it's my least favorite part of this process. I don't even mind captioning, but editing, I'm just like, ugh. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna try and not give myself too much editing to do. But I thought in this week's Knit and Natter, I would talk to you about some of the little things that I have treated myself to recently, because when you're feeling a bit run down, you should treat yourself. And yes, I did. <laughs> First up, we have a little addition to my plant family. This is a bonsai tree kit. So I ran into Poundland a few weeks ago now after a yoga class uh, to pick up some bath salts because when you run a lot, bath salts are your best friend. Um, that is Epsom salts and they are cheaper in Poundland, as you would imagine. And I spotted this on the shelf and it was only a tenner um, and it comes with the, the nice planter and all the stuff to grow yourself a sweet gum, liquid amber formosana, whatever that means. Um, and it's gonna be red apparently. And it's going to take forever 
to grow. It's gonna take about five years, um, if I'm lucky and it actually takes. But you know what, I've always wanted a bonsai tree. I would love, love, love if it did take and I had my own that I'd grown from a tiny baby seed. So we're gonna give that a go. Um, I believe, I did read the little book, I believe it needs to be planted in the autumn, so I will be planting that very soon, one weekend. <laughs> um, now it is October, um, as you uh, will no doubt have noticed, um, because I said it at the beginning of the episode, I think. But if I didn't, it is October! Hello! Which means that spooky season is in full effect. And while I'm not a massive spooky, kind of Halloween-y person, I love autumn. I love autumn because it is not too freezing. It has that beautiful um, kind of just buzz in the air as we kind of just gently begin to wind down from the hecticness of summer. Um, we're heading towards one of my favourite festivals which is bonfire night. I love the smell of fireworks and bonfires and it's just, oh, I love it all. Which means that I went a bit nuts and bought myself some candles. Now I love a candle at any time of the year. Any time. I love a scented candle. However, autumn is when TK Maxx really goes to town and has the most incredible candle selection. And I kid you not, I spent at least an hour, probably more, sniffing and sniffing and sniffing and sniffing pretty much every candle they had. And I ended up with three. I narrowed it down to three. One of them is here. This is Maple Pumpkin. I have another one, which I'm just going to grab. Here's a chunky boy. Now, this is tobacco leaf. It is smoky, green, and aromatic. And I don't like smoking at all. I don't like the smell of it. But tobacco leaf... Mm, it's just so good. And it's so big. It's got two wicks. Um, the one that I have got lit at the moment was a kind of magical candle. It was a very spooky season um, all over the jar. Um, and it is, I think, nectar and honeysuckle. And it's just so sweet and lovely. Oh, it's so good. And it's got, there is an undercurrent of something a little bit more musky and ambery, which is nice. So it's not quite a spring-like smell. It is definitely an autumnal Halloween-y smell. Um, I cannot wait to light this baby. I'm probably gonna light this one next and save this one because it just smells so good. <laughs> the other thing that I splurged on was lots of books. I am a massive uh, Kindle reader. Um, I used to go to the library a lot more, but Kindle just is really, really convenient, um, particularly when it comes to carrying things around with you. Um, so I use my Kindle a lot. And I recently burnt through the entire Whitehaven Witches and Whitehaven Hunters series by TJ Green, including pre-ordering the couple of new books that are due out very soon. I really recommend them. It's um, about witches based in Cornwall and it's like an adventure series and in every book they kind of, they come up against something and they have to like defeat, defeat vampires and um, mermaids it's just really really fun they are really light quick reads i love the characters um and then the whitehaven hunters series is a spin-off of that um which is just really fun i just really 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 enjoyed it more recently i read the x hex by erin sterling um which was also really fun um I was just in clearly a very witchy mood, which I get into at this time of year. Um, there's just something very cosy about all of that. Um, I love the film Practical Magic, which I also watched recently. So I was just very much in that vibe. Um, however, I have been staying up quite late to read. So I am taking a few days off of reading because I probably do just need to sleep. But you know, when the books are good, what can you do? And actually, I'm going to give a shout out to adding things to your wish list because I, you know, Book Twitter and Book Talk are fantastic for recommendations. And I'm always um, kind of tapping out of those apps and going into my Amazon app. Yes, Amazon, not great, but very convenient for Kindle books um, because Amazon 
Kindle is an Amazon device, obviously. Um, but I have a specific wish list for Kindle and I will just add them there. And that kind of almost hits that kind of that buzz of like getting a new book. It's on my list. I know I'm going to get it eventually, which is good. Um, and most recently I did add um, How to Read a Dress, which is about the changing fashion from I think the 16th century or so. But I've actually added that to my hardcover um, wish list, uh, my like real physical books wish list, because I love those kind of reference books in hardcover. Um, co cover? Hard? Hardcover? Hardcover? <laughs> Um, because they're just much nicer to flick through and also my Kindle is about 10 years old I will not do justice to the pictures um, it's not out yet I will link to it below it is available for pre-order and I'm toying with the idea of pre-ordering it I don't know if I should pre-order it or ask for it for Christmas don't know yet so but I will link to it below Finally, 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 The Great Pottery Throwdown. Now, I started watching this earlier in the year. I may even have talked about it on the podcast. It is basically The Great British Bake Off, The Great British Sewing Bee, but for ceramics, um, as the title would indicate. Weirdly, I never finished it, and I don't know why I didn't finish it. I think I possibly got derailed by working late one night for an event, and then it just out of my head as as things do recently um but i binged it over the course of a few days um i always find it quite emotional because keith one of the judges gets quite teary um about a lot of the the stuff people make but i just find it fascinating and to a certain extent i enjoy it a lot more than um bake off and even a bit more than the sewing bee uh, to a certain extent because i love cake don't get me wrong i love cake but I don't like baking it. I'm not a big fan of cooking. I don't really love cooking. I enjoy baking, but it's not my passion. Um, I don't sew, obviously. Um, and what I really, really like about the Pottery Throwdown is that there's a lot of history involved. They're always talking about different techniques and the history of those techniques, which they don't do as much in Sewing Bee and Bake Off. They used to do in Bake Off. I remember they used to, when it was uh, on the BBC, Mel and Sue would dress up and like do a little skit about the history of scones, for example. So yeah, I really, really enjoy it for that reason. And I am absolutely desperate to have a go. I think I would absolutely love it. I would be dreadful because I am a beginner and I've never done it before, um, but I really want to have a go at it. So fingers crossed, I can. But that's it for this week. Um, again, I'm really sorry it had been so long. I originally intended to take a month off, so two episodes, and I realized very quickly that I needed more because I didn't want to force myself to knit or crochet um, just to have content because that's no good. If I just needed to switch my brain off for a little while, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And that would kind of be the, th the thing that I want to leave you with, that, you know, don't feel pressured to do things that you feel you have to do. Um, do things for the joy of it. Obviously, we all have jobs <laughs> and there is work and there are things that have to be done. Um, but really ask yourself, you know what do you need and try and give it to yourself if you can which is what I've tried to do the past few months and what I am continuing to try and do. I'm gonna say that I will be back when I can. I hope that it will be in a couple of weeks. I hope that I can get back even if it's only monthly um, but I hope I can get back to some regularity now that I'm making a lot more um, but I'm not going to make any promises because who knows. But in the meantime take care of yourself. I will be back just as soon as I can and I will see you then for another cup of tea. Take care. And we were going to the...